Count it. Hour two overdrive continues. Brought to you by Count FanDuel, it. bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Brian Hayes, the dog, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. So we got a big hour here with role play level of concern later in the hour. Our boy uh, Mark Mathock coming up here in a moment, which means reluctantly we're going to have to talk about Ottawa blowing another lead last night. Oh, tell um, me about it. You were up close <laughs> and personal, man. It, it is wild what is happening in this country right now in terms of the extremes. Vancouver won again. Winnipeg does not give up four goals ever. That is 30 no. games in a row. It's insane. That they've only insane. given up three at most, and they spanked Columbus last night. Edmonton has won eight in a row, I believe. The Leafs are rocking. And then the extreme is, you look at the TSN Trade Bay board, basically the Flames roster is on it. <laughs> so yeah. what's going to happen there? Ottawa, to me, Noodles, I'm not watching as closely as you are. They look worse under Jacques Martin than they do DJ Smith. I, I might be wrong on that, but it's that coach bump. It did not exist for Ottawa. One You're game. Right. One yeah, game basically at home, one game. and then they've been getting dummied, and it's... It's critical time. Like, you got to do something. I don't know what it is. It's well, something I, in, something out, just to let her. I don't know what you can do. Well, you're, And that's you're right. why Pooley's getting paid and Steve yeah. Stayhouse is getting paid to figure it out because well, that's it, crazy ass stuff, man. They're getting gonna, killed every night. It's going to have to be an evaluation <laughs> situation, but I, you're right. Like, I get asked, okay, well, you know, again, they change the coach. I'm like, they just changed the coach. Like, you know, what is the, like, to me, it's it's still, like, I think Jacques Martin, and again, I, I'm not in the know of this, but I would argue that Jacques Martin stays the rest of the season. He's a senior advisor. He's a coach right now, but he evaluates what they have in that room, up close and personal. Okay, this core, I like this guy, you know, thought I like this guy. Maybe it's a different situation. We can move on from that, but it's an evaluation from right behind the, the curtain. And then you make, you know, hard decisions moving forward. I, I, I don't know how many times, and I, I, even yesterday at the media meal, I was talking to a scout for a top-tier team, and he's like, man, that team just on paper just looks so much different than they do the product. And and I, if I had one thing, it was like, okay, you know, you could fix this, but it's special teams, it's goaltending, it's top-tier players that aren't playing with a lot of confidence. Like, it's not just one thing. There's so many things. Mm. And then, they, you know, going to the third period, they played a really good game last night. It's 3-2, and adversity. They can't handle it. If I had to say one thing is they're fragile, and yeah. confidence is a fragile thing. But think of this. Somebody said this to me last night, guys. At one point, the Edmonton Oilers were right there, like right as far as where Ottawa was in the standings. Edmonton is 16-3 and three in their last 19. Mm -hmm. Ottawa's had two stretches where I think they've had six-game losing streaks, where Edmonton's had two eight-game winning streaks. Like that, you know, with the three-game losing streak in between. Like, that's the difference is top players got going in Edmonton, and the top players have been, you know, wildly inconsistent in Ottawa. And as we know, the league is top player driven. It's not getting done. Yeah, that that is it. I mean, you're right. Sixteen and three. Uh, Winnipeg's right behind them in terms of points percentage over that time, and Vancouver, I believe, is right behind them. Yeah, like the crazy. three hottest teams in the league are Edmonton, Winnipeg, and Vancouver. It's uh, it's pretty incredible. And yeah, I saw Brady Kachuk was being interviewed by Claire Hanna in between the second and third, and he's like, "Here's another example. We got a chance here to." Prove that we're going to be different, and then Calgary rolls them in the third. Um, it, you got to really, make changes, Hayes. You got to yeah. go in there and make tough calls where it's like you think you're hot stuff in this team. One of these young players, I don't know which one they're going to pinpoint, but it's like we got to get something in here different than what you're doing. Well, and I, you don't want to give up on a player, but what you have to kind of assess is the mix it, because the mix is not the right mix, and that has been proven. Time after time, unless you want to say we still believe in the mix, because well, that I looks mean, like quite an like an assessment yeah, I, that was way off, thinking I, that not, that was the right group. I'm not giving up on Kachuk, Stutzla, absolutely Norris, not, Jamie Sanderson. Like they're they're like the you know these guys are all 23 and under. So you're right, something has to give, but it's it's still you've got to figure it out, you know. And that's to your point, Jeff. You can't just keep going. And going, hey, you know, they'll work their way out of it. Something has to give, where whether it's accountability, whether it's, you know, like, I'm not lying on it. Any given night, it's like, oh, you don't get the save you want. You don't get the goal you need. You don't get the, the play that you want. Like, it's just, it hasn't They got to get some veteran guys in there, and I think that's what they're planning to do. But I'll tell you what, and Noodles, please don't get mad at me. 
That number seventy has got to got to stop some pucks. That well, I'm not I, I was either. just about, you know what you know what's happened here is the previous GM left Jack Campbell, but his name's Jonas Corposalo. They gave him a five year deal at five million. He's 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 got an eight eighty seven save percentage. Like Corposalo is killing them. Every time he's in net, it feels that way yeah. anyway. And it doesn't And those mean young guys, no they try to make a charge and then all. It's just like any poor goaltending scenario. You can't win a game when it's 3 nothing after two. Or you yeah. get up th- you get up 3 2 in this after the second period, and then all of a sudden it's 6 3. Yeah. You're screwed, no, man. I, I agree. You need more, but like, do they believe in that scenario? Like it, two months ago, we're sitting there talking like Stuart Skinner can't play. All of a sudden, Stuart Skinner is like. 12 and 2 in his last If that's 14. the case, Noodles, that Corposalo's got to make a hell of a turnaround then. I agree. Well, and, and also, Skinner's not making any money. Corposalo got a five year deal, I believe, at $5 million. Like, that's yeah, he Jack. Did. He got Jack Campbell's contract. Well, I mean, and, Blake Coleman's on the third line for floor, uh, for the I, Flames at 4.9. Like, people make it like $5 million is the, the I, biggest I, thing. Like, I hear but you, you have noodles. to back it I'm up. I'm just saying, you know? it literally is Jack Campbell's contract. And yeah, the bottom line is, issue. is after Matt Murray, you can't have that one back up Matt well, Murray because that's nonsense. All anyway, right. let's right. bring in Matt. Here's uh, here's Mark Mathot, our TSN hockey analyst. Uh, are you is Corpus Solo Jack Campbell? Like, has it got to that point out there or what? I, look, I, I heard I, it's hard to disagree. I, I just I just think with the way the team has been playing and this isn't just like exclusively this season. I mean, they've got they've run through goaltenders. They ran through, you know, Cam Talbot. Gustafson, Murray, and now Murray's an exception, I suppose. But yeah, okay, you can. There's an argument there. He's obviously struggling. He's fighting it, and it's unacceptable, as o, as o mentioned there, going you know three two into the third period, and then four unanswered goals if you include the empty netter. It's like, come on. So, well, what are they doing, Meth? Like, why well, they're, is they're, that they're, young group of guys giving up that many goals? Because that's all they've ever known. All they've ever known is losing. Since that, like, basically, like I left in seventeen after our run. And then they went through this rebuild again, and you could blame the previous owner for maybe pulling the plug too soon, or I, I don't know. But that, none of that matters now. But they made they, they go through a few great drafts, bring in a really a, a nice amount of core pieces that we're seeing now. And obviously the game's changed now, so you come out of your entry level deal and you're signing an eight year deal, like just like that. So, but but more importantly, they're they're just. That's all they've ever known is losing games or being on a losing team per se, and. I'm not necessarily blaming DJ Smith for that. I mean, it's, there's a lot of moving parts here, but to, to just focus on Corpus Allo, which I'm not suggesting that that's what you guys were just saying, but I mean, it's way more than that. Like if you watch some of the game last night, some of the turnovers, I mean, like, and we're talking about like, this is also on the captain and, and Brady. I mean, I've, I've fluffed him up now for like three years and I think he's a fantastic player. He's entertaining, but I mean, when you're turning the puck over, five feet away from your defensive blue line on the wall, like his butt's up against the wall, puck gets to him, turns it over, they end up scoring. Team did that twice. I, I just think between the puck, the poor puck management, they're very thin on the back end. They don't have enough depth back there. I mean, they've got a lot of, you know, nice little sexy pieces that can move the puck around, I guess, if you want to make that argument. But they don't have guys that can just put out fires. They have an abundance of left shot D. They don't have enough guys playing on their natural sides. They've got all these things happening, and, and it's like, it reminds me of when I played in Columbus. When I played in Columbus, my first couple seasons, um, we had a pretty, now I'm not comparing cores because we weren't even close to as skilled as what Ottawa has now, but, you know, there was, there was uh, Derek Broussard, Jake Voracek, Chris Russell, Jared Bull, myself, Steve Mason, like a bunch of players that ended up playing quite a long time, but it, the sauce wasn't working there. So eventually, they just started trading us all away. They brought in Dubinsky for Nash and Anisimov, and it just changed the culture up. And just like that, the team sort of started to turn the corner again. So I, I don't know. I, for me, it's a culture thing. It's, it's a learning thing. I know, like, if you watch some of the clips, I realize this rant's getting long. But if you watch some of the clips from the games that they've been struggling in, a lot of it is, like, forwards aren't coming back properly. They're not committed to playing defense. Well, the Matt, that's the biggest fire. problem. Like, how do you get to change the approach, the mental approach, to get a Timmy Stutzla and others, because it's not just Tim, as no, you I mentioned, agree. Brady might have had a cough up, 
But how do you get them to value getting the puck out at a critical time of a hockey game yeah. as much as getting 100 points? Because I talk with hockey people all the time, guys that have been in yep. the game forever, and they're either pro scouting or they're in TV or they're running a team. And one of the biggest problems is everybody thinks they're Connor McDavid, and they want to deke around everybody, and they want to get 100 points, and it's, it's insane. Yeah. But yeah, it, how is Jacques it, it, Martin, how do they not respect him enough to implement – things saying you got to get the puck out there you're not going to play like well, i John, find it to be incredible mark i I'm, i totally agree I'll, like i'm not disagreeing with you there I, I like if i'm trying to like search for excuses well jacques not going to turn it around during these dog days mid-season right? like you're not i not at least not after 10 games we know how he is he's a tactician but like this is this is a bigger problem than just a couple guys not playing defense i mean I think the back end, like I said, I know I'm repeating myself. I think it's poorly constructed. I think bringing in Chickren last year, that's great. Awesome. A nice shiny piece. It's not enough. I, there, the whole thing needs an overhaul there. And then, again, the buy-in up front. How do you change that? You trade a piece. You do it now. Or you do it, you wait a little bit. I don't know. Like it, A player like Josh Norris right now. Now, granted, I don't know how much value he has at the moment. But, like, so you're not going to get you know, an $8 million player in return. At least I don't think you will. Especially at a player at his age, maybe. But... You, you need to bring in character. And I heard you, I think I heard right before I got uh, sent into the chat here with you guys, I think I heard one of you guys mention that they need some more leadership. That I agree with. Like, you need, so, you need a couple character guys because right now all they have is Giroux. You know, you can argue that, that Brady's there. Tarasenko's there. Tarasenko's not a vocal guy. He's playing in Ottawa right now. Like, he's sort of in those twilight years, like the end of his career, right? So they need, they need some legitimate and I don't want to say sandpaper and people just roll their eyes when I say that. I think it's more just like guys that care and like guys that aren't shy to hold you accountable when you make a mistake. I'm not in the room, so I don't know the dynamic with the leadership group right now, but it's not working. You've got a bunch of young guys running the team, right? So between that and then, of course, you guys mentioned Corpus Salo. It's a mess. Yeah. I did not have them here, obviously. I did. By no means did I assume that they were going to be making the playoffs. I thought maybe they might make it. They'll be right around that last spot in the wild card race. But, I mean, this is a mess. I, I don't know how or what else to say about it. Yeah, and it's interesting, Meth. Like, you, you know, you mentioned that Rick Nash Columbus deal, which sent a message. But what happened not long after that was John Tortorella showed up. True. And, True. like, that's kind of what, like, what I'm really curious about here. Because you're hearing rumors already, like, you know, they might give a guy yeah. his first crack and, you know, go down the DJ road again. I don't know, man. Can't do like, that. Get Craig Berube in there exactly. and turn it around. You, wow. need, a, you yeah. need a guy so, a lifer, like I think, yeah, anyway. You need, you need 100% Hazy. You either need you need uh, Berube or I would even argue a guy like Patty, Patty Wall, like a guy that can connect with the young players, but he's also very passionate. It sounds silly, but he's financially secure as well. Like the guy just wants to win games, and he just does it out of pure passion. Barubi's obviously similar, a uh, very successful coach, but they need a guy that won't bend the knee to their, the leadership group and isn't shy to make a statement and sit a guy that's refusing to play defense or, or for refusing to properly track back. That's who they need, a guy that is willing to sit the captain, an assistant captain, whoever it is. I'm not saying to come in there and go scorched earth on the group because I feel like that doesn't really work these days. But I think accountability has been a big issue in Ottawa. Uh, that's no secret. That's all ever, and anybody ever talks about. So you bring in a guy that really has nothing to lose, doesn't care, and is willing to just legitimately put everybody in their place. That's the only way this changes. Because right now, like I'm watching it, it's like the puck management stuff that we talked about earlier, making simple plays when nothing's there. Like, there's a, there's a, was, I think it was Parker Kelly. And he's been playing very well. Like The depth guys I don't like ripping on because their jobs are very simple and hard. But a player like Parker Kelly tried making a sauce pass 10 feet uh, into the middle ice like to like Stutzler, another player that was on with them, and he was five minutes from the blue line. All he had to do was chip the puck out. Like, I never played with a fourth-line guy or a third-line guy that would attempt to make that play in a tight game. You know what I mean? Like, you have mm -hmm. to understand what your role is and what your abilities are and stick to it. So, anyway, I, I just... I think a lot of people here are just very frustrated. And it's to a point now, like nobody even knows where to point the finger. <laughs> there are so well, that's, many, you know? Yeah, that's where I was going to go, Matt, because I get asked every day. Last night after the game, I'm walking, I yeah. go for a beer with a buddy, and there's some Sens fans. Like, I, I guess I would say, and we could probably go around the table because you can weigh in just even from the outside. Yeah. Where do you start? What's, what's, what's the 
first thing you do? Because I like it, you could say, yeah, to the goaltender, make some more saves, and then you could say I'll to the D, you. you know, like so. What's if there's one thing that you could do? What would you do for their game, Buffalo tomorrow? What would you do? Oh boy. Well, are you talking from a tactical point of view, or can I mention a trade? Uh, listen, anything you want. What I'm, I'm saying is, is okay. I get asked, and I, because to me, I've got ten answers, but all of yeah. them can't be. Uh, you know, this is a six month process. Yeah. It's not. It's yeah. not a situation. So, it, it, what's step one for you? Well, I, so I'm with you with that. Like I mentioned earlier, right? There's so many different areas that, that need to be addressed. But if, if I were to make one decision, so I'm not dodging your question, Noodles. I would say right now I'm trading Norris or Shabbat, one, which I hate, I hate that I'm even saying this, but I would trade one of them for sure because you have to do it. You have to make a move here. It's been stagnant for years. So you trade one of those two players and you get a legitimate top four right-handed shot on, on the back end. I think, I think more, and, and obviously I'm biased. You guys know I preach about this every time I come on, but you're not going to win anything until your back end is done. Like your back end for me is your first priority, including goaltending. I don't think that – I'm not as aggressively going to um, attack the goaltending situation. I think there's more potential there. I don't think they've been getting much help. And then, of course, up front, you know, assuming you do that, and I said Norris because they have an abundance of centers. Once Pinto comes back from his suspension, I'm comfortable with Stutzla, Pinto, and Greg. Pinto can play those minutes. I've seen him do it. He's played a full 82-game year, up and down, second, third line. He's put up 20 goals. I know. Are you sure Stutzla's not a winger, Meth? Like I look at him I and I see Pavel Bure. I, I don't see just, a centerman. I I I know, but pe- if you asked people this two months ago, they'd laugh if you questioned it. You know what I mean? Because he was such a he, he came in and had an immediate impact, and he had a great year last year. I guess by by their standards, I know that. I just it, don't so. think it has to be like a negative thing. It's like maybe you're more suited to play wing. Yeah. I honestly think I really like Pinto as a player. Maybe I like him too much. Maybe people don't like him as much as I do. I think he's yeah. really responsible, and he might Agreed. help. But maybe you throw Stutzla on the wing with him, and then get oh, some boy. kind of grizzled winger. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Well, you guys would know more about the forwards as far as like what kind of adjustment you'd like to make. Like I, you know, my bold, my bold comment right off the bat. Like I said, I trade one of those guys, especially at that eight million dollar tag. I believe both of them are hovering around, and Shabbat's no trade. His modified no trade kicks in next year, and they have so many left D. So between the center at the, the depth at center with Ottawa and the depth on the left side, that's the other experiment. Like that, I just think failed miserably was the assumption that you could play a left defenseman on the right side and have it work. Some players can do it. I'm not saying you can't do it, but it has failed miserably in Ottawa. And, you know, that's, that's, that's your general manager. That's, you know, the players that you bring in. So, you know, they brought in Chikrin. It was a nice, shiny piece. But now Tyler Clevin's waiting in the weeds, probably going to be somewhat impactful next year, big defenseman. He's a left shot. They just they have too many. So you've got pieces. You've got some leverage here to make a move. I just don't know who you go after. That's the only thing. I mean, that's the scout's job. If you guys have an idea who's hanging out there, a right shot demon that could fill in that void, I, yeah. I know every team's always looking for them, you know? Exactly. Uh, with Mark Mathot. So let's go to the other end of the spectrum here. We've talked a lot about Ottawa and where they're at. Yeah. You know, the Western Canadian teams are rocking right now. Edmonton, Winnipeg, Vancouver, the three hottest teams in the league since yeah. the end of November. If you had to put your chips all in on one of those teams for the rest of the year, which which team are you going all in on? Which which wave are you going to oh, ride? You know what? I, I like like I guess from a defenseman's point of view, I I would like to see Vancouver do well just because I love the size on their back end and the the moves that they've made. Um, but I think selfishly, I guess from a fan's perspective, I just want to see Edmonton kill it too. I know mm-hmm. they're on a heater right now, um, and I just I, it, it would be a crime. You know, for those guys to either make it in there and then just get bumped out in that first round. Like, I want to see them go deep. I want to see what McDavid and Drysaddle can do. So, you know, I've got that. Like, as far as my favorites go, if you're looking at the West right now, I've got, like, Winnipeg, obviously, which is sort of like a surprise. I don't think too many people have them doing as well as they have been doing lately. But Colorado, Vancouver, Edmonton, those are my three horses right now. I'm going to lean towards Edmonton only because of the McDavid factor. I don't know how or where you guys stand on that. Yeah. Goaltending is always going to be a big of an issue for a lot of these teams and, and getting that consistency. And I don't like Edmonton's back end that much. But They've been yeah, playing I mean, better, think, though. Like they're, They've yeah, been playing a lot better, and that, that's what's been I significant. Agree. They've cleaned things up. 
Yes. Yeah. You know. So I think, like I said, I think, I think I just love the way Vancouver set up. You've got your two puck movers, Hughes, Ronick, if you want to call Ronick a puck mover in Vancouver. And then you've got a bunch of towers that just put out fires back there. And that's sort of that blueprint that I keep stressing that Ottawa needs, but it's easy. Man, to- what a great term, Meth. Like guys that put out fires. Like what a great term for a defensive core to have when the I, ability to do. When I started yeah. playing in Ottawa, when I started playing in Ottawa, I, I, I think when Eric, when Carlson got hurt for a little bit, I started carrying the puck more. And Paul McLean, our coach at the time, pulled me in his office. He goes, Meth, I don't want you doing any of that. He's like, your job, just put out fires. Just be the guy to help him out, put out it's fires, a make a good first line. Pass. And it's it means you have forever. garbage hands, but it's a great yeah. line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm laughing and crying at the same time. Thanks, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I. You know what? It's great though for the like the West. Obviously, you don't want to hear this in Toronto. In in the East, it's the Leafs. Yeah. I mean, that's the ticket that's that yeah, people are gonna sure. have to ride in the playoffs. But um, you know, you got Winnipeg. I can't get there either because. Of I can't get past what happened against Vegas, which is probably unfair to them because Vancouver didn't even make the playoffs last year. Agree. But yep. they they like defensively, they do not give up goals and they Hellebuck, put out fires. Hayes. They put out fires consistently, and Hellebuck yeah. has been you know he's probably up for the Vesna if it goes out yeah. tonight, right? Noodles. He yeah. and the same yeah. thing with Demko. I mean, the yeah, two of them Demko. are top yeah. three, top five in the league right now. Yeah, agree. So agree. I, I'm just not like. You guys know I've picked Winnipeg like the last three yeah. or four years. Dude, me, ten. I'm not even mentioning their name because I don't want to give them the kiss of death. Like I swear <laughs> to God, like I, I had somebody ask me, and I'm like, I love that team. I'm not saying a word. I just want them yeah. under the radar. All of a sudden, they're yeah. just you know top tier team in the National Hockey League. Vancouver again. They didn't make the playoffs, but they they just the way they're they're set. I laid eyes on Vancouver live. Whatever, it was January second, week ago. Yeah, like this team's legit. Talk it's a, nice a coach. Team. Like, mm-hmm. you know, oh, yeah. talk it's a legit coach that just drags it. Like, that team was playing for keeps in January, which I, I really respected. And, you know, I, 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 I would argue there's probably three coach of the years right now. Torts has to be in that conversation because Philly's. You yeah. know, Philly's not going away. Like they're kind of kicking around. Um, you know, out 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 west, it's got to be talk. And then who else? There's somebody else in there that I'm missing. There's there's three. Co- oh, bonus in in Winnipeg. yeah, bonus bonus definitely deserves yeah love in Winnipeg. Yeah. Like there's yeah. there's no yeah. question he's, about that. He's unbelievable to play for. I played for him. Uh, he was our D coach in Dallas, and then he took over when when Hitch got uh, let go. But I mean. Just a great communicator, and I feel like I guess Torts is sort of your outlier there because he's got his own style. But that's that's the thing, right? Like just being able to communicate to your players and gain their respect, and then they'll listen to you. And Bones, like it was a no-brainer. Anything he ever told you, like you would just listen to him. You'd never smirk or scoff at him. He's just one of those guys that I think commands the room properly, and they all respect the hell out of him. So uh, it's nice to see him succeed right now. Great guy. Well, and it's interesting how these awards work, where you get fatigue almost immediately where I would argue the job Jim Montgomery's doing in Boston is probably equally as impressive as yeah, last year. Yet, last year was so dominant and so good, but Bergeron retires, Krejci retires. They're dealing with injuries. Lucic, you know, obviously we know he's not around the team. They have a goaltending issue last night. McAvoy's been in and out of the lineup all year. They're 24, eight and eight. Like yeah, it's, yeah. it just doesn't stop at Boston. And, it, and it's because yeah. they're so well coached. They play the same way every single night. And what a great idea, Hayes. Yeah, what it's a great a, idea. It's a pretty good thing to preach. You but honestly, think. like, why? Like, I don't understand. Like, you talk about this young group in Ottawa, Meth. Like, you wonder yeah. what players would say if you just brought them into a meeting and just watched, like, just watch the Bruins clips. Like, just say, "This is no. what they do all the time, and this is what you guys don't do." Like, would that be effective or no? I don't. I mean, like, you got to remember too. Huh, like you, you, all these guys are on long-term deals, making serious money. Uh, I just, it's hard. Like, like so what? They're going to tune that out, and they suck that bad. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I, 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 they might be rolling their eyes, or maybe like it. I, it nothing's going to change, and it starts with your leadership, right? I mean, nothing's going to change until like if you're on the bench. Let's, I'll give you guys one example. Like if you're on the bench and you're watching the game, and you're a second-year player, and maybe Brady or Timmy or another one of these vets they're not back checking properly or there's no effort there or there's a, an egregious turnover by the blue line and they're doing it multiple times and no one's addressing it behind the bench. No one's getting in their ear and telling, come on, that's unacceptable. Or if they do it a couple of times, they don't get benched. 
Like, so where do you draw the line? Because all these players are watching that and thinking, okay, well, he's getting away with it. Like, what's the big deal? And, and, and it's also a culture thing, like I mentioned earlier. So I think until you make a splash and bring in some character, which I know is very vague, <laughs> it doesn't really address you specifically, but they, they need to make a serious, just a serious move. It's stagnant now. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they're going into these games. Like, like I can remember, like I mentioned earlier, when I played in Columbus, when you were playing, when I was playing in these games, when we would go into like Chicago or Detroit in those late, early 2000s, late 2010s, when they were still sick teams, you know, there was, I, when they would score a goal or two in that first period, you're almost dejected right then and there. Like you almost kind of felt like, oh, here we go again. Yeah, and we're going to lose worst, 5-1. It's, it's the worst attitude to have as an athlete, but it, it's learned over time. And when you're in that losing environment, it just becomes normal. And it's, I don't want to say it's acceptable, but it, that's just the way it is. So mm. you have to inject some life into that lineup and, I don't know, make a move. But, again, like when it comes to, well, who do you, who do you trade for? I don't know. Yeah, that's the ultimate question at this point. All right, Meth, we'll leave it there, buddy. We'll do it again soon. Thank you for this. Sounds good, boys. Thanks for having me. There's Mark Mathot, TSN hockey analyst, former NHLer, joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Check out Maple Toyota's huge truck and SUV lineup, including Tundra, Forerunner, Highlander, and Grand Highlander in stock and ready to deliver. Visit mapletoyota.com. Man, there's Nick, Nick Saban's retiring. <laughs> Nick yeah. Saban is, is retiring in Alabama, so... He's retiring. Pete Carroll's out in Seattle. We're waiting to see what's going to happen with Belichick. Um, Vrabel's gone. Vrabel's so. gone. Changing of the guard. That's Changing what it of is. the guard and like and Saban. I, like people are like, oh wow, that guy actually isn't he like seventy something? Yeah, he's well, not a young yeah. man. He's been doing it forever. And the program he built a dynasty. He built maybe the greatest run in, in college football history. Yes. And you know, in the last couple of years, it's tailed off a bit. But he, there's still a Final Four team. Like tailed yeah. off a bit, and you're still ranked, you know, fourth for the college playoffs. He's um, thrown some change in his jeans as well. A oh, lot yeah. of money, Big time. Oh, a lot. Big well, time. and what what you're hearing, I saw, I heard a quote from so I I couldn't pick up on who it was, but he said there was a time back in the day college football was the best because during the summers you just golf, vacation, you know, a couple mini camps here or there, yeah. whatever. Fired up in the fall. Yeah, fired up in the now fall. Now it's never ending. Now it's never ending because of the recruiting and because of the transfer portal and the NIL. So they're saying in college, you know, that's me. Harbaugh's maybe just said I've had enough, and that's why Harbaugh or Saban's had enough, and that might be why Harbaugh wants out because it might be an easier lifestyle and a better life coaching in the NFL where that's it used fair. to be the opposite. Um, all right, role play level of concern coming up. We've got Darren Dreger will join us in just over half an hour. PJ Carlissimo back into Darko's rant last night. What we can expect out of the Raptors tonight against the Clippers. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. You can never, never ask me to stop drinking. Do you understand? Really do. All right, here we go. Role play level of concern brought to you by Boston Pizza, Canada's favorite sports bar. This January at Boston Pizza, get delicious mouthwatering pastas starting at eleven ninety nine every single day. Enjoy the pastas you love at the prices you just can't miss. Hustle in your local BP tonight. All right, role play level of concern. We haven't done this in a while, mm-hmm. so let's uh, let's get fired up here. Oh, we were talking about team records, right? Zanks. Doug Gilmore has got the Leaf record at 127 points. Right behind that is Daryl Sittler at 117 points. You are playing the role of Daryl Sittler's 117-point season. What is your level of concern William Nylander will pass you this year? What has he got right now? He's got 53, I believe. You know what? I think he's a pint on the patio. To get up around there, like it's been going swimmingly. Mm-hmm. And I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just kind of being realistic. Things tighten up here pretty soon. You're going through a stretch where there's the dog days, but I think, I don't know. I just think it's gone so perfect for him. I don't know if you double down on that. Maybe he just does it magical. Maybe I'm, maybe it's two Bud Lights and a shot of, a shot of Grey Goose. Okay. It's mildly kind of, he could do it. Well, but I th- it's, it's not a slam dunk. Like, I know you yeah. like to talk about 
you know, projections, and if he keeps going, he's going to do this. It's not automatic. No, it's not. And he's at 57. 57 I, I got yeah. that wrong. 57 points and 30. He's got, if he stays healthy, that's another part of this, right? Like we were talking about Bedard. Bedard's going to have 30 goals and set. Now he's not. He's out for six to eight weeks. So, yeah. you know, you knock on wood. You hope nothing happens here with Willie. 57 points in 38 games. If he stays healthy, 100 points is a lock, right? If he ends up with 99 points, you put that into perspective. That's disappointing. 99 points would be disappointing, <laughs> likely at the rate that he's currently on. But I hear you. I mean, I, I think Daryl Sittler, he's okay. It's it's early. Yeah, but I, I, you know, it's a lot of points, man. He's had a great man. season. Yeah, 57 points. Right? Like, he's had a great season. But I agree. Like, I think the league tightens up a little bit down the stretch. You might see a three- or four-game stretch where he doesn't get much or mm-hmm. stuff like that. But, but, you know, I'd like to see him get 100 points. He's never gotten it. The highest he's ever got is 87 points. Right. And, he, you know, he admitted to us the other day, well, I've, in the last 10, 15 games, I was in a slump. It doesn't matter. You had 87. If you can get to 100, you continue to improve. And, again, next year he's going to be being paid like a 100-point player like the rest of them. Yep. So he's going to have to back that up. But I, I agree. I, that's a couple beers, maybe a couple shots, because okay. everything kind of has to be perfect for him to hit those type of yeah, numbers. Yeah, those are monster numbers Sittler put up, Dougie Gilmore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Noodles, you're playing the role of Ilya Samsonov. What is your level of concern? You have not had enough time away from the team to solve your issues. Give me Rick Bushwood. Six Bush Light, six Bud Light, and I love them, tall boys. I'm not Nick Cage, <laughs> but I was. my first reaction was Nick Cage, but then I'm like, give me Rick Bushwood because giving him a reset, like I guarantee you he's not just laid on the couch for a week. Like there's probably been a process. He's probably been working with the goaltender coach, sports psychologist, all of that type of stuff. So there is a plan in place. I'd still like to know what it is. Like do you believe he's playing – I'm not Detroit convinced he's playing. I, I think Jones will play tomorrow. Jones will play Saturday. I wonder if Hildeby starts Friday for the Marlies. Looks good. And they play. Call him back up because you you know you don't have to play Samsonov. And it would be the most curious. Um, like I want to be positive, guys, but yeah. it would be the most curious. I would be all season. I believe, even to see the Leafs in the first game of the playoffs, to see if Ilya got back up and got into the net, what he would be like in the first period of a game right now. I would be curious as hell. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. it scares the hell out of me, to be honest well, with you. Maybe it's that's scar- what it's not, it's, thinking. Yeah, it's you know? tough not to be kind of like, oh boy. And sorry. it's like, if it doesn't work out this time, what the hell are you going to do after that? Well, so are you guys caged then, or where were you? Like uh, I was Rick Bushwood. I I was it was ooh. aggressive, but not caged. Yeah, I'm I'm I might be Wade Boggs <laughs> with a green light. <laughs> You know, I'm like, Wade really? Boggs at a Tampa Bay Lightning game, 48 pack underneath the seat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I, is kind of nothing for him, but a for 48 Wade packs of 48 yeah. pack. Nothing for Wade, not for yeah. normal people. But yeah, I don't see how eight days or 10 days away from the team, hasn't played, didn't play with the Marlies. I just don't know what they could have possibly done that would lead to seeing him play on Sunday against Detroit that it's just going to magically change. And here's another reality. Let's say he starts against Detroit and plays really well. It's still not over. Remember, actually, it's somewhat fitting. Manoa came up and played against the Tigers. He pitched against the Tigers right before the All-Star break, actually pitched pretty well. Remember, we all came in and said, man, that was pretty good. Now they hit the break. Let's see what he's got. And the wheels fell off again after that. If he comes up and gives them one start, that is not the end of it. You're, we're on Samsonov watch, I think, for the rest of his tenure here in Toronto. For for the rest of this season, I think you're right. always a little bit leery. Like, what's this guy up to? Is he a bad goal away from falling off? Um, and maybe the Leafs know that, and they, there isn't a timeline long enough Dude, that's going to make them stupid. feel better. This guy might have one more performance in him, and if it's, yeah. it's just a gong show, it could be game over, man. It, it, it's just being yeah. a realist. It has to be. That That's being a realist. If he shows up and it's a mess and they got to pull him or something, it's over. You, you can't right. you can't keep playing him again. Uh, I am playing the role of Darko Ryokovic. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Doubles down on it. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Uh, what is my level of concern? The refs will hold my rant against me in the future. Pine on the patio. I don't care. You know, I, I don't care about how the refs feel about me. I don't. I don't care. We're not winning a championship this year. This Dude, is- I think it's a great message because it shows the ref haze. 
we're not putting up with this garbage, so don't even think about doing it to us again. Yep, exactly. And listen, this is it's human nature. Refs understand it. They hear it. Ben Taylor might take issue with it. He was the one officiating last night. The new crew reffing tonight, they're probably aware of it too, right? They're like, I get it, 23-2 to two foul shots last night in the fourth. That's a joke. That shouldn't happen in the NBA. They're not stupid. They get it. I think you'll see some calls break the Raptors' way. I mean, that's that's the nature of the beast when you're dealing with human beings officiating a sport that's very fast. And the nature of basketball is basically every possession, there's contact and you can blow the whistle. Almost every possession, you can find something and say, right. well, that could have been called. Maybe this is ticky-tack. So Darko, I don't think he was planning on doing that. Obviously, it got away from him last night. He started suggesting the game was rigged, basically. <laughs> but... Yeah, I, I don't think Darko Ryokovic has any concern about future repercussions whatsoever. Outside of his bank account, he's going to get fined. It's going to happen. Oh, he didn't think it was rigged. He just said, if you're going to do that to us, just let us know and we won't show up. Okay, but what's the right. difference? I mean, that's six and one, half dozen the other. He's basically saying, you know, if they had to win, if you're no just going to give them the win, I have yeah. no chance to win. We won't waste our time. Scotty Barnes. Scotty Barnes. <laughs> 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 Scott, give me the Scotty Barnes again, Jay. Scotty Barnes, who is all star. <laughs> Man, was he fired up last night? Yeah, it's like, thank it you, was dog. like he was, he, he was trying to catch his breath <laughs> while he was yelling. Like he was yeah, there was so a Chevy guy vibe in there. Beside a little bit. himself. Uh, thank like, you, Doug. Thank, thank you, Doug. Scotty Barnes, who is all star. You know, technology and stuff. <laughs> Scotty Barnes. Barnes. He yeah, was he so was riled up. Fired up. Thank though. you, Doug. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on here. <laughs> oh, you are playing the role of Cutter Gauthier. Cutter Gauthier, the newest Anaheim Duck. This is ridiculous, man. Okay, you didn't get a know. chance to comment. You can comment after okay, Cutter later, comments, yeah. and then you can speak to Cutter. What is your level of concern? You put a target on your back league-wide, and you put big pressure on yourself to succeed now. Am I answering this as what I know will be the target on his back or what he thinks you're, is the target? Well, whichever way you want to interpret it, but you're Cutter Gauthier here. So are I think you worried? I'm, I think, I think I'm Wade Boggs at a Tampa game, a 48-pack where it's like you're feeling good and you've got a vibe on because you're a little bit concerned. And this all comes down to one thing moving forward. He's dealt with this. He's going to get it every time he goes to Philadelphia. But if he doesn't perform and he – it, it, it like trends toward any type of being a dud, even a poor first season, then this this is going to follow you around. If you just become a, a dialed in player and a star or a stud or whatever, like people just, ah, oh, that's the guy, you know, remember when he said stuff it to Philly, it just, it goes away. Mm -hmm. But if there's any kind of struggle, it's just going to be magnified because it's going to be, that's the spoiled Brad. He deserves this nonsense because he's the guy that thought he was too cool for school to play in Philly. So I'm a 48 pack at a Tampa Bay Lightning game with Wade Boggs. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I just, I don't know what you guys said yesterday. Like, I, I heard some crazy stuff yesterday. This is this kid like was really disrespectful, very arrogant, very. Wouldn't talk to know, the Flyers noodles. Like just, yeah. but. That's embarrassing. Like I, I, I hate that stuff. I'm sorry. Like regardless, but the if you thing wanna... is for these kids, that's the norm. He thinks that's normal for him to do that. Uh, yeah. To well... not even speak to people like John Leclaire and Patrick Sharp that go to the World Juniors to see you. It, it actually makes me sick. Like you yes. can say, listen, I, you know, I'm gonna head in a different direction. That's my all you had it to say. This my, is my, not for me. I thought it was. Now it's not. I'm sorry. My understanding is Adam Fox handled it that way. I want to go in a different direction. I'm not going to come to Calgary. I'm going to, you know, give me an opportunity to go somewhere else. They made it happen. It wasn't, you know, the best situation because, you know, Calgary has to move them, try and get an asset, all of that. But the, to not speak, like, this made it personal as opposed to just a business transaction going, hey, I'd like, you know, myself and my family would like to head a different direction. Like, the fact that you are don't even have the class or whatever you say it to, to speak and and man up or whatever. Look look people in the eyes and say, hey, we're going to head in this d different direction. Like you hide behind the age and you hide behind or don't even talk to them. I just I I dislike how it mm -hmm. went down. He he has the right to play. You know, this is the other thing. Like, who knows? It sounds like he's going to be a great player. Obviously, at the junior level, like he, he, you know, he seems like he's going to be a rock star, high draft pick. But there's no guarantee. Like, yeah. look at well, Lafreniere. You just brought up a guy, Adam Fox. 
Yeah. Adam Fox is a great example. He told Calgary to stuff it. He told Carolina to stuff it. Now he's a New York Ranger and a Norris winner, and no one ever talks about it unless we bring well, it up. Well, that, like, that's what it's amazing. Like, listen, I don't disagree with your assessment. I, it's immature. It's bad counsel. Someone right. should have told them, grow up, sit there, and say, this is what's going on. Get me out of here. I'm not signing, and see you later. All of that is 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 accurate. But again, Adam Fox is one of the, I think, three or four best defensemen in the league. Why isn't yeah. Calgary complaining about that? He stiffed them. He did right. the exact same thing. And sure, he was open and honest about it. It doesn't matter. You don't have the guy. He's in right. New York. Hyman did it to Florida. Jimmy yeah. Vesey did it to Nashville. Like it, it hap- it's, There's a theme here. It's always college players that, right. that do it. Yeah, well, I mean, Hyman's Canadian, Hyman's Canadian, but the other three but, are American. I just, I'm fine with it. You, you choose to do what you want. No problem. But this is a business. Don't make it personal. Like, uh, somebody mm-hmm. goes to talk to you, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to talk to you. What do you uh, It's like, embarrassing. Like, yeah. it, it, That's like the if part you're at I that hate. stage, yeah, and you can go ahead and say that he's a young kid. Matter. But someone was prepared counsel. to get, someone's yeah. prepared to give you four or five million dollars in a rookie contract. You're a grown ass man. You better act like one if you want to say no to it. End of story. I, I just, you, you, you know, Brian, like, you're right. Players move on. And the organizations like Calgary, you're right. Calgary would have loved to have Adam Fox. And, no he, you know, behind the scenes, if you feel like that's him saying you stuff it, but he didn't, you know, not say, I'm not talking to the manager. I'm not talking to, you know, Hall of Fame players in your organization or top tier classy people that have been in your shoes, other American players. Like it just, that's what bothers me about it is the way it went down. And again, it, you know, it'll be a moot point. Five years from now, if the kid's a rock star in Anaheim mm-hmm. and Anaheim, you know, Anaheim's got some really good young forwards, but, you know, they got to turn the corner because, you know, I watched that Zegras play the other night against the Leafs. He, he did nothing. He's that got guy horrible like habits on the ice. Winner. Yeah, he's like, it was, you know, he's got very, it, that's what it is, Brian. He's a very talented player with really poor habits. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, it's yeah. video game. It's a video yeah. game style, man. That, that's why, like, the Trey Bay board is out. His name is on it. Because, you know, Gauthier is going to be a part of their future. McTavish will be a part of their future. Leo Carlson will be a part of their future. Um, But, you know, they got to figure out what else they're going to do. And, like, my understanding is Zegers and Drysdale were very close. Drysdale got shipped out for Gauthier. You know, we'll see what happens. Um, All right, we'll continue with role play later this afternoon. Role play level of concern was brought to you by Boston Pizza, Canada's favorite sports bar. This January at Boston Pizza, get delicious mouth-watering pastas starting at $11.99 every single day. Enjoy the pastas you love for the prices you just can't miss. Hustle in your local VP tonight. Ilya Samsonov is back up with the Leafs. We'll get into that with Darren Dreger in about 20 minutes. And Corey Perry has been reinstated. Does anyone take a look at Corey Perry? Does he want to return? to the NHL. That more coming up with Dregs in about 20 minutes. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, Darren Dreger, PJ Carlissimo coming up. The last two-minute report is out. It's not going to make Raptor fans happy. We'll tell you about that. TSN 1050's Leafs lineup, your chance to win Leaf tickets every week all season long. This week we're giving away tickets to see the Leafs play the Winnipeg Jets, the best team in hockey. Winnipeg Jets. January 24th, plus we're throwing in a $250 Visa prepaid card with each pair of tickets to make it the ultimate game night. Vanilla Visa prepaid cards are available for purchase at Petro Canada. Today's player of the day is Keith Ollie. Keith, Keith Ollie. Ollie. Wow. I haven't heard that name in years. He was left-handed a big shot. left-handed D, yeah. yeah. He's in the Dion trade, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was actually, because he was in, I think we had him in Calgary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good guy. Really nice kid. Yeah. Really, really nice kid. Well, there you go. Keith Ollie. That's your guy. And uh, wow. speaking of Keith, it's like Rick Westhead reporting Keith Pelly is going to be taken over as the president and CEO of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. Must have wanted to come home because it looked like he had the coolest gig on earth on the European tour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's been running Being golf at all those there. great events, Ryder Cup. You know the like he was everywhere. You like if, for people that didn't know who he was, like he's big with Toronto in the media. Mm-hmm. And you saw a big major event over there in Europe, DP World Tour. There'd be Keith Pelly like at the ceremony at the end. Yeah, and I, as a golfer, I'm like that must be so awesome. He, I believe, he was at the forefront of changing it from the European Tour to the DP World Tour. Possibly like, so. I, I think Keith Pelly was at the forefront of that. Wow. And like he's got a history with both companies that own MLSC. He worked for Bell, 
Um, he worked for Rogers, I believe. I know he worked for Rogers. Yep. Um, and he's been over in Europe, obviously, for a while running things. I mean, it's a great gig. You come over, president, CEO, Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. He's from here. He's coming home. But I do wonder, I'd like to get him on. Hopefully he's willing to do some interviews. You know, did the live tour, like the stress that came with that, did that make you want to get out of golf? Like it's, because they yeah. got hit badly too, man. They 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 got a lot of players poached. They really went to the wall trying to, you know, battle against live golf. And um, anyway, yeah, Keith Pelley, because they've been, you know, they've had an interim president and CEO with MLSC for quite some time. And they've been trying to fill the position, and it's going to be Keith Pelly. And I, I'm curious his approach because the last couple of of you know people in the position, we did we never saw them, we never heard from them. They had no profile, which I, I believe was by design. But you know, prior to that, you had Lywicki here. You Lywicki was doing podcasts on street corners in Toronto, yeah. like like he was talking to everybody. So well, we'll see. isn't Pelly a big personality too? Yeah, like a lot like Tim Laiwicki. Like he's you know guys outspoken, not shy to be bold, that type of stuff. I mean, Laiwicki has that reputation. Absolutely, so he does. Right? Yeah, no, exactly. And, and Laiwicki was incredibly successful here. Yep. Um. So yeah, we'll we'll see what this means for the inner workings of the the Maple Leafs, the Raptors, Toronto FC, the Argos, etc. But um. Yeah, Darren Drigger coming up in the next hour. P.J. Carlissimo coming up on Darko's rant last night. The Raptors losing. The Raptors back in action tonight. A lot to get into, including our best bets brought to you by FanDuel. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.